fortune telling. <laughs> Nope, not for here. Cool. Uh, Fee, do you want to produce? Yeah. Probably not. Or maybe if you want. Um. No, no. It's not technically from. It's not technically from script to screen anyway. It's the film shock show. Yes. I think I found some decent uh, background music. <clears throat> Welcome to Not From Script to Screen. This is Fiacris Film Shop. Fiacris Film Sock Fun Time. Okay, cool. Um, you just literally hit play, you don't need to worry about levels or anything. Yeah, we've mics, got some music playing Mics right are these knobs. Oh, yeah, with these mics, just leave them in the middle and it works. That's okay. fine. It yeah, no, I, I've yeah. heard. Um, yeah, leave them at around where the uh, scotch shape is. If you do want to shut off the mics while you're playing music, just turn them all the way. Leave them where the scotch shape is. Yeah, they're knobs as opposed to sliders. So, uh, you should be all good. Ooh. There you go. Are we live? We broadcast? We're 24 yeah, yeah. hours live. 24 we, hours we live? live the whole time. I, yeah, I thought we'd have like some like music music lead in. Yeah. Um, well, if you put on the headphones, you can tell me whether you like this background music or not. Ooh. Ooh, are we doing smooth jazz hour? Yeah. With strip to screen? As, as like, that's that's going to constantly be playing on the stream as we're talking. Unless you want to show you something else. No, I'm quite happy with this. Um, you know? I, like I guess. Too, yeah. Yeah, I guess we should do a proper intro since we're like, yes, okay. we're we're going into we're going into our territory. Hello, hi, hi. I'm not Nell. I'm not wearing makeup, but uh, we're gonna do a make another you makeup challenge. Seen him in the Rocky Horror, though. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm I'm in the producer seat once more. Um, welcome to the Fiacris Film Sock. Fiacris fun Film Sock Fun Time, aka Fun fr My My Hobbies Collide. Uh, on one hand, I have my lover and uh, husband for life, Rob. I was wondering which way you were going to go, whether you were going to yeah. say me or him. I wasn't <laughs> yeah. sure. No, no, no that's, on, cool. on, that's on, cool. On this side, uh, cool. from script to screen, we've been doing this two years Two now. years now. Yeah. Um, Rob usually takes the lead, but uh, this time I, I, I said I would do it. <laughs> um, and, you know, we've, we've had some, some serious news discussions. Yes. But, uh, we have very much a format to our show, and this is yeah. kind of formatless. This is a bit formatless. And then on my right, I have... Uh, Colonel. You, you're not going to introduce me as you know, my son, mistress. My son, okay, my, yeah, my, okay. my, oh, my mentor, my, not peer mentor, my that teacher. my stepson? Your mentee? My uh, pupil. Oh. My student uh, from Film Sock, uh, from UCD Film Sock, and I thought, what better way, what better time to combine these these two loves, these two, these two brotherly loves of, of radio and, and film. Then with a 24-hour broadcast, which this is the third time I've done it. Last time we did ASMR, and <laughs> the year before, the year before that, um, we did like heavy metal. Mm -hmm. um, ASMR. Yeah, no. Last year's 24-hour broadcast, uh, I did an ASMR hour where I, I tapped on objects and whispered into the mic, and then we played death metal really, really <laughs> yes. loudly. Uh, it was like two in the morning, so it was fine. 
Um, if you guys haven't donated, by the way, this is an aid of the Dublin Rape Crisis Centre. Mm -hmm. uh, hugely beneficial. We're up to like triple... 90 euro now. Yeah. We're almost in the triple digits. So. Whatever the page you're looking on right now that you're watching us on, just look down below where we're talking and there will be a link to the GoFundMe right there. Please do, like Peter said, it's for the Dublin Rape Crisis Centre and it is a very good cause. Yeah. And as you can tell, we have lovely sweet jazz because this is not, um, strictly speaking, from script to screen, nope. this is not strictly speaking a film talk production. This is Fiekra's film extravaganza, well, and I'm better. joined by my two fantastic ho guests, um, who... And we just met today. We yeah. just met today. <laughs> uh, like so, ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. So... So this is very freeform today. It's a little bit freeform, it's a little bit of a I podcast. I wish we had something as exciting as putting makeup on Nell's face. We... I wish, but, uh, I feel like... Why couldn't you save your leg well, waxing till today? My leg waxing? <laughs> my legs actually are, I mean, if we want to... We've got a camera combat. now. We do have so... camera. This is new for me. I have to stare at something. Uh, yeah, very smooth. I did Rocky Horror last last week, and yeah, I yeah, had yeah. to get my legs shaved. So if we're, I'll just channel go, Tim Curry. I just want to put that up there. Mm. It's real smooth. I don't um, think the camera's that would, high. Would it be weird if I touched it? Yeah, do you want to you want to okay, feel cool. it? Because it's gotten bristly. We have actually like the waxing did nothing. The hair remains. You think twenty years of hard work is going to stop that? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's got weird. Um, oh man. So my big question, yes. when I when I set this up, I was basically like, we talk a lot about movie news, mm -hmm. our show, and we talk about a lot about movies in our on our own work. True. But I've never asked anyone what their favorite movie is. Like, you never, that's like a general conversation you have over a cup of coffee. It is, and I feel like this is the perfect opportunity. I have a, I have a, a mug full of cherry coke. Um, <laughs> I've got a bottle full of it. You got a bottle full of it. Um, you, can, you can have some of my cherry oh, coke because it's a bit over there. Thank you. I, so I thought I put water in my bag. I realized I didn't. Pepsi, if you want to give us money towards yeah. the Dublin Rape Crisis Center, please do, and we'll keep plugging your products. All right. So if I'm... not, we need a stick. <laughs> we have a stick. Oh, we have a stick. Whoa. Ooh. I if feel not, like I'm going sense. to shake this very aggressively. That's a very aggressive stick. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so okay. you were gonna ask me, or not? Okay, ask I'm gonna. Me. I'll, I'll start with. I'll start with you. Yeah. I, I feel like we could turn this in a, into a slight competition with me as the arbiter. Um, Ooh, like a movie fights. I guess like a movie fights. Okay. Um, in a way that. Do you guys both have an idea of what your favorite movie would be of all time? If you were stranded on a desert island and you had one movie you could bring, it's the only movie you can watch. Ever That's a very different die. criteria to what my favorite film is. Though, okay, what would be your I favorite film? It, it does that. change. My favorite film, I think, and it has been for a little bit, which is kind of weird because it normally changes all the time, is Good Will Hunting. I see. Um, Robin Williams won an Oscar for the performance, written by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Um, it's a movie that I think it, it speaks a lot to me in terms of, you know, having certain circumstances affect the way you see yourself and the way you see your life and how maybe it can affect the potential you have that just because your, your ability is not the only arbiter of how you do in life. Mm. Um, that's kind of one of the big motifs that kind of really kind of speaks to me. But in all in all, I just think it's a fantastic story and a really, really good piece of film, yeah. good piece of cinema. It has it all. It has the drama, it has the love story done well and not patronizingly. Um, it has, you know, the kind of mentor, mentor-mentee relationship, but it, does, it doesn't go the way you think it is going to do. It's not all plain sailings and there's more than one mentor. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it, my favorite film does change a lot, but that for a while has been like my consistent answer. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, I, I, I could, I, I never stop feeling the feelings I feel when I watch that. Anyway, that's my very long-winded way of talking oh, about I that mean, one. Uh, well, I, will, I will ask one thing. Yeah. Has your perception of that movie changed at all, yes. given, <laughs> given recent recent okay. stuff? How does art change based on the artist? Can the art stand on its own, or does it always have to be connected to the person that made it? It's a difficult question. Like, It was my favourite film before all that stuff happened. Yeah. Um, obviously, the characters behind it have had, you know, it is a Harvey Weinstein-produced film. Um, of course, you know, uh, Matt Damon has had certain things come out, you know, certain comments he's made. Ben Affleck supposedly has, you know, skeletons in his closet as well. Uh, I mean, I can appreciate the art without necessarily liking the artists, I think. Um, there's plenty of artists whose political kind of ideology I don't agree with. Certain things they said I don't agree with, but you can't then, if the art is good, the art is good. And I get why some people that will put them off. I mean, but 
hasn't I, I do kind of think about it when I watch it but it's still just a great piece of cinema regardless of who was involved with it unfortunately okay um yeah see I, I always find that my my favourite film like you said about yours it changes all the time yeah. um so I always find it very hard to pick a favourite film as well because it depends what mood I'm in and because of that I tend to pick films that I can watch in any mood yeah. um but the, the number one spot at the moment goes to The Emperor's New Groove, <laughs> which is a child's <laughs> David Spade, right? Yeah. David Spade, yeah. Uh, Michael Warburton as well as Crunk. Yes. Yeah. He got his own movie out of that, didn't he? He Crunk. did. Crunk. Uh, there's, I love this long-running theory that um, Crunk... Because you know the whole plot revolves around uh, potions that turn people into animals? Yes. The, the theory that Krunk is actually a squirrel that was turned into a human by Yzma, which is why that he can talk to squirrels and like constantly has like an affinity for nuts and is slightly stupid. I love that. I, it's fantastic. Anyone that. Um, who, oh yeah, um, oh, who played um, the main, the, the, the guy who, who, uh, who Cusco wants to take his land? Oh, uh, John Goodman. John oh, Goodman. yeah, John yeah. Goodman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The That's last, an interesting one. The Last Goodman. That was Disney, wasn't it? Um, I think so. Yeah, that was Disney. Oh, no, wait. It, it, was, Dis- it was Disney. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I watched it. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it's funny, because, like, in the Disney classic pantheon, you never hear that one. You hear, of, like, of course, Lion King and uh, like Beauty and the Beast. But, like, that wasn't really the same. Like, it wasn't that same kind of being budget Disney. Yeah, no, it was, it was on. So the animation well style was, was very unique. Yeah, it, it, was, it was quite unique, and as well as that, um, I feel like with, with The Emperor's New Group, it went straight for comedy rather than trying to bring in any other major themes, like you know, like The Lion King. There was a morality yeah. story to it as well. There was, but it wasn't the like it wasn't it to the time. front. Yeah, it wasn't in your mind. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, The Lion King was basically Hamlet. It was. Yeah. Well, so. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel bad because there's a whole host of these Disney movies and like The Emperor's New Groove and what's its face Lilo and Stitch are sort of one of them where oh, it's Lilo like they're they're good but they're they're at the age of 2D movies in Disney where things started to go downhill which is why they excuse me which is why they switched to 3D so because then you get stuff like Home on the Range I always thought their switch to ho- 3D was kind of like pre- like because of Pixar and, I, and how, how big they yeah, but then like the last one being like The Princess of the Frog, which was great, but I did, did, like that, did but terribly. I think no matter your animation style, if your story holds up, your film is going to hold up. Mm. Um, I, yeah, no, I, I don't buy this thing that kids only want to see 3D animated films. No, They'll see anything if there's a good story and it's fun. Yeah. Mm. I think the 3D thing is a crutch because we've seen so many bad 3D films. And there have been 3D films that have flopped. Mm. I mean, as far as I'm aware, I don't think... Uh, I don't think Cars 3 did brilliantly. I don't think... <laughs> Cars, The Cars you know, series hasn't done brilliant to begin with. Yeah, the first one did well financially. It still wasn't great. Mm. But there have been a few ones that didn't do that well. What was the last Pixar one that they did? Uh, I, I can't remember. But you Coco was good. I did like Coco. Coco, Coco made me Coco? cry. Coco did make me cry. I actually found Coco to be very slow for the first half. I was thinking, like, where the hell is... You know, mm. when does this thing pick up? Mm. And I thought the second half of the film was brilliant. Brilliant. I just thought that first slow half was very, very slow. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I don't know how I got talking about Coco. But I, well, what you're saying there about Cars 3, mm. there's also Cars 2. Which was still and, not good. And there's the airplane. Uh, oh boy. Those were direct to DVD though, weren't no, they? No, they were, they were, t- they they were, were originally going to be direct to DVD and then they were like, hey, let's make this a full movie because why not? Because people like Dane Cook. People really. Like, who likes Dane Cook? I don't think Dane Cook likes. Dane I like Cook. how they like they couldn't justify putting Dane Cook in Cars because he's Dane Cook. So they're like, oh, just fuck it, just but put cars it in planes. And planes are the same universe, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. But they're like, we can't put him in the mainstream, you know, Cars story. Mm-hmm. We got to put him in an offshoot. If you also <laughs> don't like Cars, please donate to the Dublin Rape Crisis Center yeah. via our GoFundMe. Do you not like Cars, the movie, not the the vehicle? Not vehicles. Because <laughs> I wouldn't have got here today without one. Yeah. But it didn't talk to me. Yeah. I also sorry, sorry note, because you had the, the stick up when the leather jacket. You looked extremely like Negan. I'm just thinking <laughs> Negan that Negan from The Walking Dead. Well, well, well. Okay. Rick. I I I, I got Where's my barbed wire? I like the 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 best. I movie. can't point at the accent, sorry. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah. The Goodwill Hunting, you know, the, the the nice, you know, heartwarming mentor story. I like uh Emperor's New Group, you know, the the 
the comedy animated show. You're both wrong, though. Best movie of all time is Fargo. Well, in all fairness, this wasn't asking what the best film of all time. You asked us what our favorite film was. Yeah, this doesn't matter. Best movie of all time. <laughs> I love Fargo. <laughs> I but, love Fargo. Okay. I think it's a great Fa- film. My favorite old William H. Macy's best performance. Francis McDormand's best performance, in my opinion. Peter Stormare's best Peter performance. Peter Stormare. Yeah, even though he says so little. Yeah, I, it's, it's a very favorite uh, Steve thing. Buscemi's one of his best as well. Yeah. Thoughts, See, on the, uh, thoughts on the TV show? I've seen the first two seasons. Oh, I've seen the first season. I literally just finished the third season last night. I haven't I watched the third it season. with. Uh, shout out to, to Merck. We watched it oh, last I night. Oh, I remember. It used um, to be my uh, history class. Um, well, we watched it last night, the final season. Oh my god! Like I love the movie for being just a great movie. The TV show is a mindfuck of the utmost proportion. Really, it is. The first two were kind of mind fs. The um, the third one though is yeah. very very. Well, I know a couple of people that started to watch it but didn't continue with it. Yeah, see, I I watched the first season and I didn't continue after that, but I loved the first season. It was just that when I started watching the second season, it was all different characters. The only person that's the same is the father. Yeah. Because he's the father. The guy who plays the lead in the second is the father of the main detective in the first series. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I just found that that, it kind of threw me off because I was expecting. Usually, when you go back to a show, you expect a continuation of the characters that you already know. So, when I watched the first season, I loved Billy Bob Thornton. And when I went to the second season, and I. He didn't have that strong character. Exactly. He wasn't there, so I just kind of. Yeah, the, just I think the last two episodes of Fargo season one are some of the best I've ever seen in television. Yeah, yeah. Those last two episodes yeah. where everything's ramping up, like I actually in general I think I preferred season two to season one, mm. like as a whole. But the oh. last <laughs> bit of season one was just blows you out of the water. I, well, I, I was thinking of going back to season two, but mm. I have to go back to it now, not expecting Billy Bob Thornton. Mm. True, it's I will the, say. Season three blows both of them out the water. Really? Je- I, it's not as surprising. fast paced. Hey, do you want to get? Do you have cock sauce? Do you have rooster sauce? Oh, sweet. Do you want to get on this? We're talking about Fargo. You got cleansed. You got cleansed. You've been cleansed. <laughs> how was the ma- how was the makeup in the end? Well, you were there. It was you good. Saw what happened. You know, it was nice. Is Alex still alive? You look lovely. Can you join me? Yeah, come in, get in. Sure. Get in. Is Alex still alive? I roast him pretty badly. I feel I feel awful. <laughs> With that, um, uh, what's that reference you made? Oh, Streetwalker? Yeah. Yeah. No, just to finish up with Fargo, because um, the, the third season, one, has a better villain than Billy Bob Thornton. I can't believe I was saying it. Billy Bob Thornton is fantastic. He makes a cameo in season three. Not uh, not as Lauren Malvo, but as a narrator. Yeah. Because um, it's set four years after the first season. So there's, like, character tie-ins. One character from the first season makes an appearance. I'm not going to spoil it or anything. Mm-hmm. But has a, a, great, a better villain the like the best mystery of of the whole TV show. Um, it's not quite as violent as the other two, but it's still it's still got that v- the Fargo violence. Um, it's so so good. It left me wanting more, okay. uh, but there's no more left. I like that about. I also because you mentioned about anthology TV shows. Mm-hmm. I kind of like it because if you have a terrible season, you can just ignore it. Like True Detective. Yeah. Great great first season. Terrible terrible second season, but it doesn't matter because the third season will have nothing to do with it. So. Would you recommend that I leave the second season and go straight to the third, or will I watch the second as well? You, can, I mean, you can watch the third season without having seen the second season. Like, it makes complete sense. Watch the second season though, because it gets real good. Okay. It gets real good, real quick. Um, <laughs> real good, real quick. <laughs> name, <laughs> name of my sex tape. <laughs> oh my God. Not really. Not really. Please don't endorse that. Um, but yeah, Fargo being my favorite movie of all time. We're talking favorite movies, so now. You're, you're, you're actually the only one now. Yeah. My favorite movie. Your favorite movie. Not necessarily the best movie of all time, just favorite. Oh. La La Land was the only film I watched consistently that three times. Really? really? Yeah. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Although, I before that it was Forrest Gump. Fair. Yeah. Always, I always, every time I watched it, I would see something new mm. that I hadn't noticed before. So. Yeah. Tom, Tom Hanks is... He's, he's a movie god. He is. <laughs> he is. He's not actually dead. <laughs> so, you can get sainthood before death, can't you? Oh yeah, no, absolutely, no, definitely. Okay, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip it on its head then, because we've talked about best movies. Absolutely, absolute worst movie. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm I'm just gonna put it out there since we were already talking about it. Get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. Not just movie, but like okay. series, cars. <laughs> cars, right? Because yeah. they, yeah. they didn't even 
they didn't even try to make them into good films. They were literally there for merchandise. Look, the whole point was like... John Lasseter <laughs> really loved that property for some reason. What, <laughs> he really did. What if, what if cars could speak? <laughs> what if? It's like, it's John like a Lasseter Black Mirror episode. John Lasseter's not English. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's, it's Charlie Brooker wrote these. Oh, right. You're like, what if, what if your cars had eyes? <laughs> um, I loved it. Wow. Alright. Well, Can't do this. Save me one. Yes, you will. <laughs> Why not? Because I'm your friend. I'll try. Just... <laughs> um, Stuff's going down and we're in here. Hello. Worst um, film of all time is, without a doubt, Shark Tale. Because Keen Lyons. Don't you dare! Keen Don't Lyons. you dare talk shit about Shark Keen Tale! Keen Lyons. It's his favorite film of all time. Key and Lines, and you, are right. <laughs> you are right. You are right. Shark Tale is fantastic. Will Smith Fish is film. creepy. Are you Jack not Black entertained? Fish, Jack Blackfish <laughs> is uh, annoying. Renee Did Zellweger. Say, I'm fish. Sorry, no, sorry. Did you say Jack Blackfish? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't bother to learn the names of the characters. It's so awful. I refer to them as Will Smith, Smith Fish, Jack Blackfish, Renee Zellweger Fish, Robert De Niro Fish, you know, the Martin sharks. Scorsese Fish. Whatever, I don't care. It was awful. It also, was, it can was we badly written, that... badly anime, animated, yeah, but it, terrible puns. It had one good like song. A... No. Now, you're not in this conversation anymore. One, it had Rihanna from like working at the car wash at the end. Two, no, it didn't. It no, had no. Uh, Missy yeah. Elliott. Sorry, beyond. What? That was Missy Elliott. Missy yeah. Elliott, yeah. sorry. Better. Missy um, Elliott and Christina Aguilera. Yeah, and then it has Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese. It has yeah, like most fish, of the biggest fish. crime directors and actors in they it playing sharks. They superimpose their faces onto really bad animated fish. But you don't, they're horrifying. lone sharks. They're lone sharks. That's the whole joke for an hour and a half. It is horrifying. It's the best movie. It's such a good it joke. It misrepresents <laughs> everything about underwater culture <laughs> and I mean, Italian so, culture. So does SpongeBob. Yes. No, that makes that, that one, <laughs> that one makes sense historically. To to watch Have you that. heard the his, like the the theory for SpongeBob that it said at the bottom of the bikini at all? Okay, there's this theory. Basically, the, the U.S. used to used to test nuclear warheads in the bikini at all. I think you're giving a little bit too much credit to SpongeBob. No, no. Well, that's why it's called Back bikini to bottom. Shark Tale oh my god! It's awful. <laughs> okay. Is that it is has the worst puns. Like, as a man who appreciates a good pun, how can you not see the awfulness of some of the puns? Like, it's, Katie it's Current. White. Is doing the news. Yeah, current affairs. No. Yes. No. Yes. yes. No, you're not in this anymore. You're leaving. Okay. It's 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 an abomination to God. I think when I if I if I end up in hell, it's what's going to be playing 24/7 for me. <laughs> I like I like how most of the, like most bad films we seem to have are animated. Like we have the car series. We have most early DreamWorks stuff, like Shark Tale, B Movie. B movie would be mine. I have no redeeming value for that movie. Yeah, the B movie is awful as well. I think if I, you know, like you were top at the bad place for your uh, Netflix surprise, the good place, sorry. The good place, yeah. If I ended up in the bad place, it would be Shark Tale and probably B movie playing on a loop. Forever. Maybe, maybe like the opening of Madagascar. Because like the first 15 minutes of that movie dragged, the rest is fantastic. That mm. the whole series is kind of gold, considering it went on for like three, three movies. I'm still not even. No, I'm not a fan. I think they're fine, but they're, in comparison to Shark Tale, they, they are like the Mona Lisa. Yeah. It resurrected David Schroeder's career. Run, Fat Boy, Run resurrected his directorial career, <laughs> and that People Against O.J. Simpson resurrected his movie. His oh, yeah, because he played, he played Kardashian. Kardashian yeah. Kardashian. Oh, that was a fantastic um, series. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the second season yet? Uh, no. no. The Murder of Gianni Versace. Oh, I was thinking, like, for a second, like, he went to prison. Like, yeah, no, well, he didn't go no, to prison. It's, it's, yeah, it's another, it's, it's another American anthology crime series. Story, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. another anthology series. The second series is, deals with the murder of fashion designer Versace. Yeah. Did, did they ever find out who did that? I don't know. I'm not familiar with. This. I cannot remember. Watch the show and you'll That'd find out. Good, yeah, to watch the show um, because OJ, you know how it ends. And then the second one deals with Hurricane Katrina, I believe. Odd. Which is because I think there were lo there were lawsuits involving um, housing estates. Which I was like, gonna say that would have been hard because the bad guy is literally like a hurricane. A hurricane, and it Can didn't work in Twister. It's not gonna work in this. I'm sorry. It's... Okay, so I'd like to go back and change my favorite film ever Twister. to Twister because <laughs> I watch that every every month. She hates an like... act of nature for like <laughs> it's it's not like you can't get revenge it's against the... the wind. No, it's perfect because it's the plot of Jaws. 
but replaced they replaced Jaws. the shark with Jaws a tornado. Had, like a nervous system. You could they literally killed the shark in the end. You can't this, kill the wind. This tornado killed my father. It wasn't even the same tornado. I know. <laughs> Also, that was actually. Do you know why that movie's stupid? At the very beginning, like he's like holding this door, which, by the way, this is meant to be your like windproof shelter. That's like the latch you'd find on a bathroom door. Yeah. That was holding it closed. Also, when he gets pulled out, nothing else from the room moves. Like your um, Helen Hunt and her like yeah. mother are fine. Because the tornado no. actively sought out the father. <laughs> exactly. He if smelled they, his he fear. Had stood where they were standing. They all would have been fine because they didn't get sucked out. It was the most pointless death in movie history. Stop trying to poke holes in my favorite film. That's only the first minute. I can go with, like, again, her need, need to get vengeance against wind. Against wind. It's like, ah, no. oh, I'm going to get you, ocean. No, my favorite bit is they try to play up the aggression of this tornado by killing... It actively seeks out people. It lifts up a specific truck and then drives a tree through it to kill all the passengers. Like, this tornado is sentient. And it's murdering people. That's why it's a terrible movie, because it's not sentient. It has a pathway that it follows. My, isn't the whole plot of that movie, though, they have, a, like, literally, it's a, <laughs> it's a... The plot of the movie is that it's really actually been... about fixing these people's marriage. That's the real plot yeah. of the film. Because to look into the eye of the storm is to look into the eye of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But like, also they have like a wheelie bin full of little micro, like microbots. Yes, basically, yeah. Yeah, and then the uh, and the, they track, like they just give you. All they did was map the storm. Yeah. Like that doesn't give you any new insight into it. It just tells you how fast the wind is. We're not gonna stop it. Can't exactly. I know. So the whole thing is pointless. You agree with me? <laughs> no. It was all pointless. There's a reason behind it. She like has to fate. Oh, no, no, no. Exactly. I I can't I can't explain this high level. Also, why do people live in these places? Hmm. Every year. There are these massive tornadoes that rip through these the same spots every year. There is earthquakes in like San Francisco like, on a daily basis. Exactly. Yeah. So why do you live there? Because it's San Francisco. Where else are you? You're not gonna move to Claire. Oh yeah, because you know there's nobody else in the world apart from Claire and San Francisco. Everything like you can go to the Midwest, but the what Midwest has like here? what? What happens here? Homelessness. <laughs> That's I see. Excuse me. That is avoidable because of government cuts. It's not. So that that we can do. But a tornado or an earthquake, you can't do anything about. Mm. You can build, like, earthquake-proof homes. Okay, if you can build tornado-proof homes, then live there. But, like, every year it just seems like more and more stuff gets destroyed. Sorry, this is really off-topic for a movie show. I'm no, I... Uh, yeah. But at the same time, I, it's I'm, like... I'm kind of glad we moved away from, from Twister, was it? Yeah. Because I've never seen Twister. Oh, um, <laughs> dude. Well, after this, Here's we'll go, we'll go should, to the office and we'll watch Twister. You should it's... still watch it and then, you know, realise that you can't anthropomorphise a, a piece of wind. Yes, you can. <laughs> of course you can. Yes, you can. They've been doing that since, like, the Greeks. Yeah, they were right about everything. Yeah, they were... They then why did culture. they end up in a financial crisis? <laughs> Not that... <they. laughs> You know, it is. Prescriptor Screen is a great film. You may not be able to change the earthquakes in San Francisco, but you can help donate for the Dublin Rape Crisis Center. Yeah. Uh, Those are the real villains. The the Dublin Rape Crisis? No, no, the people that do crime. uh, We're still, you know, we're still in 90 Euro. We would strongly recommend that you donate. I think we haven't helped. (laughs) Probably not. (laughs) The Uh, the whole reason we're doing the 24 hour broadcast with UCD TV and Belfield FM. Um, on my last, on our last semester here, actually. Yeah. This will be our last twenty-four hour broadcast after. This we is did my it. first and last. Really? Yeah, I didn't do it last I, year. I, I've been doing it every year. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It is such an amazing experience. Um, every year. Last year, I also did a live stream, at the same time, of me chugging Red Bull, and apparently raised like twenty, thirty euro for it. Oh, well, um, if we chug Pepsi, well, can we raise more money? Hopefully. I'm gonna drink this. Um, <laughs> So Negan, Negan is gonna drink a half bottle of Pepsi. If I don't you... think it's even half anymore. Yeah. It's... <laughs> um, but we would encourage you to donate. It's an absolutely fantastic cause. It's something uh, I feel very strongly about myself. There's a quarter left. <laughs> Do you want to see this man die live on air? <laughs> donate now. I think that's hostile. A little bit hostile. It is very hostile. I'm sorry. It wasn't hostile? Like, did they stream hostile? Like, or was that just for people <laughs> to do the torturing? I don't remember. When? It's been a lot of years since I've seen it. Actually, we wanted if we're talking about violent movies, because I remember I did my, you won, but I would won. you ever? We, last year we did the Oscar challenge. Oh yeah. Uh, on from script to screen. I won in the Where you won? Commas. 
Um, what was Peter's forfeit? I had to go see Ghost of the Shell on opening <coughs> night, which I You had to go see Ghost of the Shell. He had to re rewatch the film he hated most, uh, oh. Josh Trank's Van Forsten. Which he gave a full review of. It was utterly, utterly awful. Yeah, he hates me too. Hi, um, if you're luck watching from uh, from Wales, Peter. <laughs> um, Donate money to the Dublin Rape Crisis Centre. And then yours, if you if you had lost, was to watch a Serbian film. N no, it was um, not a Serbian film. It was... Um, Cannibal... Oh, Cannibal Holocaust, yeah. yes. Which uh, I went Which back I said I was going to do, and then I realised, don't be stupid, you won, you don't have to do that. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Um, but we do need to sort out a, uh, a punishment for, True. for this semester. Um, we, have, we, we can skip over it this week, since I might not be there. Next week is the last week, because the following like Saturday or Sunday is the Oscars. Yeah. So we have to pin that down. So we'll be going over the Oscars um, live on the script screen. Not the, the events, but we're going through the... Um, Actual nominations. nominations. I think it would be fun if you're around. We should watch the Oscars and live stream it just to yeah. get our thoughts on it. I thought it's, it's on a Saturday or a Sunday. It's on a Saturday, I think. Saturday going into Sunday. Yeah. Um, it depends. I have to check my work schedule, but I might be able to do that. Yeah. If you want to see us no. do that, donate now to the Dublin Rape Crisis Center. Yeah. Um, if we get even ten euro between then and the end, of, between now and the end of our show in twenty-five minutes, we will. Um, guarantee we will do that but i would like to if we're doing this again i would like to double down double or nothing mm -hmm. on my pr last year's uh you want to watch ghost in the shell again no <laughs> well i'll probably have to do that again <laughs> no if you lose i feel like you have to uh, uh go and watch cannibal holocaust oh. if i lose though i'm going double or nothing on this you can give me two forfeits no you don't have to do that i'll just do that anyway or you can give me like a worse forfeit I'll just give you a forfeit. Nah, that's fine. Okay. Don't worry. We'll still give you, that can still be my forfeit. Mm. It seems relatively easy to do. It might be hor horrifying, but it, it'd have just involved me sitting down and watching a movie. Like that's easy. We do that all the time. What would you give him as a forfeit? Don't know. I have to think. Yeah. I, I gave him like that last year because he kept saying how he didn't want to watch. I've it. I've had big long rants about the, go the live action Ghost in the Shell movie. Yeah. Oh, like, of course. We kept like, watching the trailers. We covered the trailers a few times on our show, and we knew it wasn't gonna be good. So his forfeit was to go watch it. No. He had to spend money to watch it, so I'd that was probably my, a bit more. I, yeah, I lost. I lost out on that. Um, and you, sorry, just when you mentioned trailers and looking at how good stuff is going to be, that reminds me. What do we think of the new solo trailer? Mm, we went over, we this, went over this the this last movie. show. Um, oh, it's we we had a big long thing where it's like at this. Why point, is Emilia <laughs> Clark there? Yeah, at this point, mm. I don't really care all that much. If it's good, great. If it's not. Uh, it's not like Rogue One where I was invested on how well it would do because it yeah. was the first anthology story. I had this big long thing where I I'm thought... I'm more looking forward to the Ben Kenobi one. Yeah. I had this... Oh! There was a rumour circulating that they're going to be filming that filming that in Ireland. Nice. Um, I'll do it! You'll play Ben Kenobi? Yeah. No, sorry. Ewan McGregor. Dublin. If he's too old... He's like older now than when he started. That's the, the whole said, point. Yeah, he said he wants to... Is it not he wants set to play before? Again. No, it's set after episode oh, three. Oh, okay, then yeah, yeah, he can do it. No, he's okay, playing... So he he's oh, playing, I thought it was like... He's six. playing the go-between between himself and Alec Guinness. He's pre-Alec Guinness, Alec Guinness. Uh, that's fine, okay. Uh, yeah, um, that's fine. Um, yeah. No, anyway. Uh, solo. I mean, the fact that they've had to do rewrites, they got rid of the... They went through how many directors before they had landed on Ron Howard? Like two or three. Yeah. Um, it's not see, always a good sign. Then they added in Paul Bettany's character afterwards. Like, Paul Bettany wasn't originally in the film, and now he is. Like, yeah, that kind of stuff it, doesn't usually end well. It doesn't usually end well, but it it kind of depends on the film. Mm. Like, I mean, th that kind of stuff happened with Ant Man. And I yeah, personally. Yeah, but only there was a wholesale rewrite, so it was. They basically still use Edgar Wright's treatment. Yeah. Did they? Yeah, I mean, all the humor they, in that film is totally Edgar Wright. Okay, it was a very yeah. Edgar Wright movie. Because I know Which, they changed director and Peyton Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah Peyton Reed. Because Ant Man yeah. and the Wasp doesn't, from at least from the trailer, I don't know. Like it could come down to what it actually looks like in cinema. Does not feel like an Edgar Wright movie. Doesn't feel like the first Ant Man movie at all. No. Yeah. Um, but as as for Star Wars, I had this big long thing last Thursday where I said I'm interested in the anthologies and in like the standalone stories that are coming out because it allows directors to put their own little personal flair onto the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Um, which has so far failed in, like, the mainline stories. Mm. Um, like, the Rian Johnson, The Last Jedi, I thought was a good movie. A terrible Star Wars movie, because it's too much of a Rian Johnson movie. Not, yeah. Uh, not enough of a Star Wars movie. I mean, movie. yeah, see, personally with, with The Last Jedi, what I thought Horse was... love story! I thought, no, okay, uh, yeah. That bit annoyed me with yes. the story, but... Peter thought, commercial! 
I thought apart and well, I mean, I thought apart from the first love story, I thought it was a good film, but a terrible sequel. Because it just completely rewrote the first way. It also did, like, I don't care what they say now, whether, I, I know Mark Hamill's kind of backtracked on this a bit, but sorry, Luke was not that guy. Luke, no matter what, would have never stood over his nephew to go and kill him because he thought someone else was influencing him. He would have tried to influence him back. He would have done something else. The answer would have never have been, even for a split second, Luke standing over his, like, how many times did he try and get Vader to change? Like, no matter what, no matter what Vader had done, he kept trying to get him to change, and now, oh, I think I'm losing. Well, the answer is to stand over him with a lightsaber. Like, that wouldn't... No, I'm sorry. That That's not Luke. Everything actually else post that, I actually could have believed. Like, I could have believed that he got disillusioned with everything, and then every... Like, the hermit thing I got, but that bit there, which was the justification for it, I didn't. I didn't see that at all. And also, the, the fact that we never got an answer for what Snoke was. Yeah. Like, oh, he's fallen under Snoke's power. Okay, they'll, how? they'll probably. F <laughs> it sounds cheap, but they're probably going to explain it either in a comic yeah, tie or in a novel tie. That's time. fine, you can do that. But you can never use. like It's like the way people go, oh, well, that H Hunger Games, it, they explain that in the book. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> the film has to answer as its own self contained. The answer can never be, well, it's explained better in the book. The, 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 the yeah. film has failed. Oh, well, like, the issue with writing a novel about kind of explaining the character of Snoke as well is that it's going to be a forced explanation mm. if they do that. They like It's not like they have already come up with an explanation yeah. before they kill them off. Yeah. Do you, you know what the, the biggest the bullshit Space example layer. of that was? Space layer. Oh, um, yeah. Do you remember at the very opening um, Poe knows exactly how to kill the Dreadnought and he knows exactly what yeah. to shoot to blow it up? Yeah. Are you familiar with Star Wars Battlefront? Yes. Yes. So the Battlefront 2 has uh, now has a single player campaign, which is however you want to put it. It does have some interesting tidbits. Like it's, it, it goes parallel to most of the movies. Has some interesting tidbits. Like um, remember the Super Star Destroyer going down in Episode 6? Uh, roughly. Yeah. There's it, it has a scene of someone from oh, yeah. another Star Destroyer watching it go down and just going, "Piet, you fool!" And I thought <laughs> that was kind of fun for whatever reason. But there's a whole story arc in that point where the Resistance. You play a, a, a former. Uh, Imperial soldier yes. turned resistance fighter who steals plans for the dreadnought and gets them to resistance just before the start of the last Jedi. This is like, oh great, now we know how to bomb this. Thank you, Deus Ex Machina, from a video game no one will play. Can I add one more thing? And I promise I will let you shut yeah. up after about, about it. Why for the whole Poe, like when he leads his little kind of thing against him, it's like he keeps asking Laura Dern's character, who I don't remember the name of. Domo. Domo. Uh, Could have been. He kept asking, "What's our plan?" Yeah. What's our plan? And our plan is we're going to keep just going forward. I do not see the reason why the plan couldn't have been, oh, by the way, Poe, here's the plan. We keep going forward and then we're all going to bail to that planet over there. Like, yeah. why? Like, he led a whole a whole uh, mutiny because basically he was right, by the way, at the time because it's like, we have no plan here. Well, we need to do something. But yeah. they that was the plan all along, but they wouldn't say it. So I do not get the whole justification for like, they then went off on that stupid suicide mission where then you got Benico Del Toro involved. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he was there. Why just not tell him? Like, oh, this is the plan. It's not so top secret. Like, we're all on this ship together. Like, yeah, there's like, there's like what, 70 of them? Yeah. And that's it? Like, what the hell? Like, also, tell him the plan. What happened to, like, the rest of the Resistance? Oh, most of them died. Yeah, that's fair. That's life. So stupid. By the way, there's plenty of other things I can say, but I'm not going to. Like, as this, I don't want this to be a rant for me. Mm. It kind of turned in that way. Bit late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Ne next segment because we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on real quick. Uh. Last year, good year for movies. Pretty decent year for movies. Yep. Favorite movie of last year. <clears throat> Maybe it wasn't as good as I thought because I'm, I'm trying to think now. Um, of 2017. Right? Of 2017, yes. Here's a stupid one. I liked, I really, really enjoyed. Here's a film that matched my expectations, which is not usually what happens. Okay. John Wick 2. Yes. <laughs> John Wick 2, I had high expectations for it because I loved the first. The first one I didn't know anything about, yeah. saw it and loved it. Yeah, here's the thing. No one had, I don't think anyone really had any expectations for John Wick 1, except for the fact that it was Keanu Reeves. Yeah. People like Keanu Reeves. Like apart from that, they were like, oh, it's just another action film. And then it turned out to be like the most amazing gun-fu, gun neo-noir 
you know, assassin movie. It was like a new Matrix. It was amazing. I'm so glad it went, that went, it did well. And it, John Wick 2 had no right to be that good because it, they were basically did the exact same thing. And mm. it's, it's, it's almost better. I'd say it is. I think in a lot of ways you can de- like they unlike the nearest example I can find is Taken Two, which went off a cliff after the first one, mm-hmm. where all they did was raise the budget. Here they raised the budget, kept the same writers, same directors, and just improved. Like what they, you can tell, what they didn't have enough money to do in the first one, they did it in the second one. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. So so that was very rare for me, where I find a sequel that was not only in, probably better. But actually, max the expectations. Like, oh, please let this be good. I hope this is good. And it was brilliant. I loved John Wick 2. And I'm really looking forward to number three now. And the, the only sequel that's ever done that for me so far would have to be 22 Jump Street. Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Again, 22 or 21 Jump Street was something that no one really expected it to be that good. Yeah. And then it turned out to be fantastic. And then 22 Jump Street was. They, they say it themselves. It's literally the exact same thing, but in college. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's almost better. Oh yeah, like they, they say it in, in the film, it's like, so wait a second, you're paying us even more money to do the exact same yeah. thing we did before. And then the, then the whole credits are just like... Nick Offerman like, is like, just basically saying that. Yeah, and then the, the like the, the next one is the like 23 Jump Street, is they're going to culinary school or something. Oh yeah. And they would said like, oh, How we actually kind of want to do that. How far did they go? I think they went up to like 83 Jump Street or something, like in the end oh, credits. Just... Yeah. But they, they went up to... Like some huge number, and they met like the original Jump Street. They did, uh, yeah. Actually, they did yeah. that in the first. They met um, Johnny. Um, they met Johnny Depp and the other guy who were the in the original Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah. I think they died in the first <laughs> one though. And then they met another guy in the end credits who was in another series of the Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah. Uh, or Twenty Two Jump Street. I don't know. But uh, yeah, like there's a lot of these films that that I googled like for films that came out in 2017 that yeah, actually haven't come out through. here yet. Um, there is a couple. I'm, I'm, I'm just seeing I'm, it, more it's than mo- Planet of the Apes. That was, I yeah. quite enjoyed that. It was very, very good. I'm mm. gonna focus mostly on blockbusters because there are far too many um, like independent good and like films. good indie films. Mm. Uh, Three Billboards was great. Technically, hasn't come out. We know what uh, Peter Fitz would say. Logan. Oh, I would. Oh, I would almost <laughs> say. Shout out to <laughs> Peter Fitz over in Wales. Uh, Baby Driver was amazing. Wonder Woman was great. It would probably be my favorite film of the year. Really. Definitely. Uh, I love Thor Ragnarok. Oh, Thor so Ragnarok good. was awesome. As Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, more or less. But oh, I, I think I would. The humor on it was spot on. It was. Yeah. It was definitely a Taika Waititi film, but yeah, it was yeah. fantastic for it. I still haven't seen his um, character. Is I, have, I still haven't seen what we um, what we do in the shadows. What's that called? What's the, oh yeah, the 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 vampire documentary. I, apparently, it's brilliant, but I, I still haven't seen it. It is really really amazing. It's basic like think Thor, but with vampires nice. and documentary <laughs> style. And New Zealand. Mm. Um, I would almost like if it weren't for it, which just restored my faith in horror movies. I would go with Logan because Logan isn't just a good superhero movie. It's a good western, mm. and I love western movies. It, it was fantastic. Neo noir was a fantastic <laughs> neo western. It's a superhero movie, it's a drama, it's everything. And I, I feel like it was, it was, I almost kind of stumped a little at the, the Oscars. It was, but like, that's the thing with like, one, it's super, it's this comic book movie, which they don't often recognize. And two, it came out so early last year. Well, not early, it came out like relatively early last year that um, it, uh, it came out so relatively early last year that it's, it, it's almost, you forget about it for the, for consideration this year. You know, like you almost have to bring out a film now for it to be in consideration for the Oscars. Like it's, I know they give out screeners and whatnot, but yeah, it doesn't really make a difference, unfortunately. Right. I'm getting yeah. my photo taken. <laughs> yeah, real... we all are. Hi, Joanne. Hi. I have a face for radio. This is unfair. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you guys in the spot real quick. Favorite movies? Uh, last year's Band of Brothers. Yes, I knew he'd say <laughs> nice. that. Or the Godfather. Up. You're gonna, you're gonna have to spe- up, speak slightly up. louder. Yeah. Up. Oh, I used shit. to. <laughs> um, I used to put on like a cup of tea and watch it up and every time like I think one out of every five times I would cry at the opening scene and it's like if a film can give you the feels after you've seen it like 50 yeah. times then you have to like, especially the opening 10 minutes Pixar's heartstrings like, you know oh, yeah. they're good at pulling them I'm, I'm a child and I know it's okay. <laughs> fair <laughs> anyway sorry nice. for oh you're alright no thanks uh, uh, thank you thanks for contributing <laughs> uh, uh, did you give yours? 
my favorite film of this year. Yeah, yeah. 2017. Oh, I'm trying to remember what, what's coming out this year. Actually, there was a lot. I will say, uh, indie indie films or like under the radar films. Good time with Robert Pattinson was fantastic. It was so so good. Uh, Again, more neo neo noir. We'll never oh, see. It. Sorry, Homecoming. Spider-Man homecoming. homecoming. Oh, homecoming. really? That was a, a Spider-Man: Homecoming and Ant-Man were actually my two favorite Marvel films. Strangely enough, <laughs> I, I preferred them. I preferred them to any of the the actual Avengers. Yeah, there are some because Spider-Man I, purists who don't like it as much because like he did make his own suit and all that stuff. But I still think. It's uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think that really matters because you're supposed to like when when he's you a make, Marvel Cinematic Universe with Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. It, like when you when you make a film, you're supposed to have that kind of creative license. To, to change it a bit and like I, the whole thing about making sure that everything's exactly like it is in the comics that doesn't matter yeah. it really doesn't yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I did like uh, what's his name again Tom Holland Tom, Tom Holland yeah, yeah. He, he is he's, he's a first. fantastic he's like the Spider-Man. first age appropriate Spider-Man yeah like, even though he's yeah. still in his 20s like he does look like it Andrew like Garfield was fine to Tobey Maguire still has that lovable nerd well, charm to him Sorry, hang on a sec. He, he looks like he's a teenager. He looks like he's young enough, apart from the fact that he's stacked. Oh, he is. Yeah, they <laughs> grind off, meat like, off those abs. They did that to, to, to where, like, the ant venom made him stacked. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> also, shout out to the, the venom trailer that came out. I call that the Tom Hardy walking trailer. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it, but I heard that Tom there Hardy isn't actually... It's, it's disappointing. I, I, yeah, see, I have, I've heard that there isn't actually any sight of venom. No. Venom. Here's the thing. One, it's, a, it's, in it's a <laughs> teaser trailer, so are they really going to reveal Venom on the teaser trailer? But at the same time, it's a Venom movie, you should probably reveal Venom in the teaser trailer. Like, you reveal something. Like, I don't need to see Tom Hardy walk into his, like, local news agents. Yeah. You know? like... Not just Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy with his American accent, which is dicey. It's better than his Mad Max. Oh. No, I like his Mad Max. His Mad Max I didn't like. Because, like, it's Mad Max. You're not going to throw, you know... Yeah, but even, throw anything Max, special like, into even it. the Mel Gibson Max had a normal voice. He's a mad Max. He's got to sound mad. He doesn't sound mad. He smell, sounds like he smoked 40 cigarettes <laughs> in the last 10 so minutes. So he's Marlboro Max, Marlboro okay. Marlboro Max. Like, he, did, he didn't speak much in that film, but it was very noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I'm pretty sure everything was was uh, was 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 overdubbed. Like, I don't think any, any of his dialogue that he used was actually from the scene. I'm pretty sure they dubbed over everything he said. Yeah. Kind of like they did with Bane. I'm looking at the, well, sorry, just in terms of Bane I thought it was interesting I don't know if you guys heard what Christopher Nolan said after uh, Dunkirk was released because mm. the, there was a lot of questions as to why Tom Hardy always had something covering his mouth mm. in his films and like he did it with he did it with uh, Dark Knight Rises with Bane and he did it with uh, Dunkirk as well where he had like the lower part of his face was covered while he was in the, the airplane. <laughs> he, like, he, was, he was essentially saying that Tom Hardy can act only with his eyes. That is pretty... I mean, that is true. No, because he don't could, agree. No, because he did it with Mad Max as well. He had yeah. the face mask on for like the most... He was brilliant in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Mm. He was really good in... Like, okay, I didn't think it was great as a film, but he was great when he played the Kray Twins. Yes. In, um, Legend isn't a great, a great movie, film, but, he, but he is a great double role yeah. in that. So I, I don't agree with that necessarily. Well, no, no, what I'm saying is that he can act on oh. his eyes. Like he, obviously, he can act with the rest of them. So Michael like Fassbender he's, he's can only able act to do like it. in a big paper mache <laughs> yeah. head. I want to <laughs> He's able to act yeah. only with his eyes. Don't talk. He can act with the rest of them. I'm sorry. Never talk shit about Frank. Frank is such a good Amazing. Book. I love Frank so talk much. Talk shit about Donald Gleeson. If you're out have, there. You, have you guys read the book? No. Frank. Oh, it's, it's really good. No. I like it. It's, it's like, like it's a very short film. What's the name of like, John John Ronson? John Ronson. Is that writer? the writer? Yeah, he's yeah. a writer. He wrote The Men Who Stare at Goats. Yeah. And he, he wrote he's written some well. fantastic books. Oh, yeah. really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. I follow him on Twitter. He's very funny. Yeah. Um, the Oh, I was trying to think of the other... Oh, God. Michael yeah. Fassbender. No. He, he's, he's, he's been announced that he's doing something now, recently, that... Oh, damn it. It was on my notes of, like... We should, we'll look it up real quick. Oh, yeah. real, while we're doing this... I'm just going through like yeah, other. Yeah, only got a few minutes left. Because like special shout out to like other movies that I thought were fantastic. Blade Runner 2049 had no right to be that good. Uh, get Out was it's incredible. Ten hours long. Again, Get Out is one of those things where it's just I kind of wish. I just I just want more of that because it's restored my my faith in horror. Uh, Dunkirk as well. Dunkirk is one of those films that I can only watch once though. Like I get Agreed. you. I yeah. feel like I've seen it 
it's an experience, but I feel like I can't go back to it because I've already engaged with it enough. Like, you know the way you can, like, there's certain movies you can go back and watch them again. And again. They're always entertaining, they're always, you're always picking something new out. Dunkirk is one of those. It's not a yeah. bad film, it's fantastic, it's amazing. It's one of, I think it might be Christopher Nolan's best work, but uh, it's like, yeah, I can't, I can't watch it again for whatever reason. This is well, Christopher Nolan, nothing beats Inception for me, but it was, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, That's the story I was talking about. Oh yeah, Michael Fassbender is going to be in the feature length Kung Fury movie. Um, <laughs> With David Hasselhoff. Oh, I David. don't, I don't know how I feel about the, the feature length movie. It's not going to be as good, it's because they're going to want to take everything that made it fun <laughs> and just kind of rip it to shreds. Either rip it to shreds or enhance it like way too much to the point of... It goes over even what it could get away with being over the top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be fair, though... I think it got away with being over the top because it was so independent. Like, it wasn't It was so independent, and it was short. Yeah. It was half an hour, yeah. which was just the right amount of time for it to the for the shtick to not get oh. old. I mean, if he's going to be anyone, I hope he's Hacker Man. I want Michael Fassbender as Hacker Man. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to hack you back to the Could past. Could he be Kung Fuhrer because he speaks German? Kung Fuhrer? Mm. He speaks German. He does. He's... Yeah. I guess. Sure. You know? I should just... Just seeing David Hasselhoff there reminds me... I know you were, we were talking about uh, favorite film, at least favorite film already. Mm. Favorite cameo. Oh, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna give a shout out to David Hasselhoff in the SpongeBob, SpongeBob movie. <laughs> oh, that is the best cameo. We rode the Hasselhoff. <laughs> yeah. And then like the, he has like a fuck he has a cannon, and oh, he, pecs, he, he pecs squeezes his pecs together. Yeah. My favorite bit is they have a whole like fight scene <laughs> on the back of David Hasselhoff with a bounty <laughs> hunter. They keep stabbing his stabbing his legs, and David Hasselhoff is like, "Boys, be careful back there!" <laughs> While he's like motorboating along at like full speed. I'm not gonna lie, the SpongeBob <laughs> film is kind of amazing. I I, 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 I I have a soft spot for SpongeBob, but this is one of those like. The only cameo I can think of right now is one that has aged awfully. Yeah. That like at the time was innocuous. Now it's just like it it, it you can't it ruins the film now. Home Alone Two. Home Alone Two's Donald Trump cameo. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, like that just that just pulls you out of it now. Like before he became president, you were like, oh, it's the Apprentice guy. Now it's like that jerk mm. <laughs> is like, and also he wouldn't have told a kid where to go. He would have like. He, he would have like read them out the wrong way. My like, directions are the best. Super. <laughs> I have the best directions. My directions are the greatest. I will tell you exactly. You will be so much richer. Oh my god. Oh boy. Um, because we only have a little bit of time left, I'm gonna ask got you about three, four minutes. one more question, and that is, 2017, fantastic year for movies. What's what's your highlight for 2018? What are you looking forward to most? Not Jurassic thingy. Jurassic, That's Jurassic not World. It. Um. Uh, Game of Thrones doesn't come out until 2019. Yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff that's just on hold. Uh, I want Game of Thrones yeah. season season eight already. Yeah, you just you just joined the bandwagon. Yeah, I so. only joined the bandwagon this summer, but like now I'm so used to having me able to binge watch everything in one go. Mm. I, I don't like having to wait now. See, I'm terrible at committing to shows, and yeah. I always find with something like that with Game of Thrones when there's so many seasons. Yeah. That it's it's, it's really worth it, man. I watch like, it all no, summer. I, yeah. I, yeah, see, I want like. It's one of those things where I always say, like, oh, I'll do it over the summer because I know I'll have plenty of time. Yeah. But then I just didn't get around to it. So I'm going to do it this summer, definitely. One thing I'm looking forward to that's out today in Ireland is Black Panther. Yes. Like, I'm here instead of going to watch it. Oh, yeah. It. I'm, I'm going to go watch it tomorrow. Monday. It's going to be great. I think I'm going to watch it tomorrow if I have time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I t- like, I have two things, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is apparently it's coming out uh, September 14th. It, it's not going to be good. It absolutely it's not going to so be So why are you looking forward to it then? Because I love it. I love the series. It's the Predator. It's the new Predator film. Um, is Arnie going to be in it? No, no but Arnie. Boyd Holbrook is going to be in it. Uh, Keegan-Michael Key is going to be in it. <laughs> it has a fantastic cast. Oh, Jake Busey. Trevante Rhodes. Sterling K. Brown. I don't know who most of these people are. Oh. And it's Shane Black directing it. So it's at least going to be oh, okay. decent. Mm. And yeah. it's going to be like... You know, Boyd least... Holbrook was in Narcos, wasn't he? Mm, yes, he played yes, the he main played guy. Um, yeah. and well, he was, was only the main guy in the first series. And then he was well, also he was in like... Logan. As... Well, he, was in the, well, he was in the first two series, not the third. Yeah. Um, and then also Sicario 2, just because I want to see what happens. Yes, I because love Because I know, I know Dennis Villeneuve is not... He doesn't have any... He's not directed. 
Yeah, he has no oh. saying it right now. <gasps> but it's being it's called Soldado. And I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think a trailer came out for it, but uh Denise Villeneuve made a lot of that film what it was. Mm. You know, his direction was so much like what in another director's hands would be boring, he created tension slowly and he kept you like when you think about it, very little actually happens in that movie. But he, you never feel like it. You, you constantly feel like it's all ramping up to something, and he keeps you interested. Another director will make can make that boring very easily. Mm, yeah. So who, who is directing the second one? Do you know? Uh, let me look it up now. I will also say the Predator um, has Thomas Jane in it, the original Punisher. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> it's happening. The greatest action film of our lives is gonna happen. Oh god. It's gonna be terrible and it's gonna break my heart. But for now. Wasn't he in Deep Blue Sea? He was. Yes, it's I actually like that film. It's not mentioned. LL Cool J and Mar Morgan Freeman. Don't no, not what? Morgan Freeman. Sorry, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, there's he's been well. aged up to look like Morgan. Oh Freeman. boy. Yes, Sicario to uh, Stefano Salima. Not familiar with him. Uh, let me see what he did. Yeah, what dirt he got? Well, while you're looking that up there, I'm just I gonna put out what I'm excited yes. about Dude. for 2018: The Incredibles 2. Oh, uh, of course. That's coming out this year. Yeah, yeah. it's set oh, for like. June, I think. Mm. So I don't know. I'm all very excited. It's gonna be great. Cause like, The Incredibles is my favorite superhero film ahead of anything by you know Marvel or DC or any anybody like that. Um, and I just they, yeah, it was Brad Brad Bird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Brad Bird was saying before that he wouldn't write a sequel until he could think of something that was at least as good if not better. So he did Tomorrowland. <laughs> 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 everyone, I feel so bad because everyone loved Brad Bird like wholeheartedly, and then he does Tomorrowland, and everyone turns on him on a dime. Yeah, but I don't feel like he deserved quite that much hate. He's still Brad Bird. Okay. It, right. One step up, but everyone was like, "We gotta kill, <laughs> kill the bird." Did I say that? <laughs> I no, just but said they we should flip bird the bird. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. Anyway. So yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that's a good that. one. Uh, is everyone aged up, or is it like taking place two minutes after? I think it's, it takes. It's I can, supposed to be like very soon after. Yeah, time. because I, well, I, I I don't know if they're gonna have the underminer. In it. I, <laughs> I think I think it takes place like either just after or during the underminer thing. Okay. So but like I, the first scene is them beating him up. That'd be cool. Yeah, I guarantee you though that the plot will most likely revolve around Jack Jack, Jack, Jack yeah. uh, having a whole bunch of powers and someone tries to take him because he is like a new breed of super. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of super, we are super running out of time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna thank Rob of from thank Trip to Scream, too. and I'm gonna thank Kunnel of Film Sock. Uh, I'm gonna Robert. thank you guys for tuning in. If you've been, if you've been tuned in, it's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, looking forward to who's coming up next. Collab with uh, Daniel, Kevin, and Ailish. Nice. Uh, speaking as because this is my actually my last semester in college before I move on to bigger and better things. I've been in Belfield FM for at this point about three years now. Uh, did a show first year called Vox Box. It was terrible. No. Uh, and then moved over from to from script to screen. Found my niche. Kept doing it. I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure doing this. Uh, we got a very limited amount of episodes left. They hope to make them great. Uh, we will make them great again. <laughs> Belfort FM has been utterly fantastic these past few years, um, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do next semester and the following semester. Yeah. And I'm going to get wrapped up. Yeah, thanks so, for uh, watching thank us, you guys, guys. So much. and listening. The watching is very different, but uh, yeah, it's probably been good. Nice. You've been very good today. Well done. Good. Thank you so much thanks. for coming on, Colonel. Thanks for having uh, me. I'm going to take my mug, and I'm going to say that the, the film, the Fierker's Film Fancy Talk Hour, whatever, whatever just keep changing is the name. over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going I'm to take my headphones off, and we, while we take a Listen break and get set up. Listen to on Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to put a... 12 o'clock. We're going to pump up this smooth jazz. We'll see you Thursday for From Script to Screen. Donate.